Assalamu alaikum my friends, welcome to another episode of Coffee and Captions where we try to go through a single figure from my book Revelation, the story of Muhammad in under five minutes and I try and I try and I try. Hopefully today we can do it under five. Let's do this. Okay, so today we are talking about religions in and around Mecca, around 600s common era, so around the time of the birth of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, during his life, okay? He was born, we believe, in roughly 570. So this is, this is what the landscape looked at, like, the, the belief landscape, I guess you could call it, okay? There's a lot going on in this figure, but I'm gonna keep it pretty simple, because we're gonna talk about the politics and the empires around Arabia at a different time, but what I want you to see from this figure right here is that in the Central Arabian Peninsula, you have mostly idolatry. And idolatry is kind of symbolized by these kind of figures that look like idols. Okay, I think they did a, we did a good, pretty good job with that one. There's also Jewish clans living in Khaybar and Yathrib. There were Jews living throughout Arabia, but they tended to kind of... Um, kind of, uh, I guess, you know, stay, stick together in these settlements right near. And Yathrib was a Jewish settlement. Khaybar was a Jewish settlement too. There were Arabs who lived there too, but they lived alongside the Jews. Obviously, you have Jews in uh, Palestine right here. This is close to Jerusalem. And aside from the Jews, right, we have the Christians. Because again, we're talking about about 600 years after Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And so you have Christians in the Roman territories right here. The Hassanids are a uh, Arabized, uh, they're Arab, Christianized Arabs, okay? So they're Christians. You have Christians in Egypt, right? Coptic Christians. You have kind of the Orthodox Christians of the Abyssinian kingdoms right here. They're Christians intermittently in and out of uh, Yemen. So these are, this is where the Christians are. And then on the far side in Persia, you have mostly Zoroastrians, all right? And so you have Zoroastrianism here. I kind of have this image of a fire here, and that represents Zoroastrianism. The important takeaway from this figure for you guys is to know that around Arabia here, you have all these different cultures and religions. You have Christianity, which is not at all standardized, okay? all different types of Christianity still brewing at that time. You have Judaism, which is kind of pushed out by the Roman Empire, and they're kind of settled in Persia and in Arabia and these kind of enclaves. And then you also have Zoroastrianism, which is uh, to the east. What's going on in Arabia? Arabia does not have some centralized religious uh, doctrine or system because no one's really setting up shop in Arabia. It's a desert, remember. So there's no centralized government. There's no centralized empire in Arabia. It's just nomads and tribes. And so the beliefs that tend to be in Arabia are kind of scattered beliefs. You have scattered Jews, scattered Christians. And so you have whisperings of a little bit of this and a little bit of this and you have idolatry and everyone's kind of just doing their thing. No one's saying, if you don't believe this, you gotta leave Arabia the way the Romans did during the Roman Empire. So that's the major point of this uh, map right here, the major takeaway from it. And so you have to understand that is the environment in which the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, was born and was raised, okay? The Arabs of Mecca, the Quraysh, I'm sure they were familiar with the context of Christianity, they knew that there were Christians, especially if you go up north during the summer route, you would find Christians, right? Because the Ghassanids are up there and the Romans are up there and they were Christians. So the, so the Meccans must have been familiar with the Christians. Of course, they were familiar with the Jews because they had to pass through places like Yathrib and Khaybar on their way up north in the caravan routes, right? Or on their way down south to Yemen, because Yemen at one point was ruled by a Jewish empire. It was ruled by a Jewish king, I should say, and it was ruled by Christian kings, and also Zoroastrians from Persia also came. So the Arabs were familiar with this stuff. It's not like they didn't know it and they never heard of it. They were familiar with it, and it's in that context that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born, and he began delivering his message. Okay, so that's just a general overview right here. If you go into prologue three of the first edition, you will see kind of a little bit more kind of uh, detail about these faiths. Paganism, what is paganism? What was a paganism like? Zoroastrianism, what is Zoroastrianism about? Judaism, Christianity, and we will get into the next figure talking a little bit about the development of Christian theology because it's very important to dive into that. But. We are done for today. Thanks so much for being a part of this. Feel free to share this with anyone you think uh, might benefit from it. And let me know in your comments how this whole 
project right here, right? Coffee and captions. How is it working out for you? Is it a nice way for you to start your day? Are you guys getting enough from it? Is it short enough for you? Is it too long? Do I got to make it shorter? Let me know whatever you think. I can make it better. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.